Hey everybody, Tom Gentile with Chris Johnson again for another Profit Strategies podcast as we enter the week ending April 23rd, 2021. Uh, you know, we like to call this week four in terms of option traders, you know. Uh, so when I say week four, it means it's the fourth Friday of the month. Uh, and we're ending April. I mean, it's 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 coming around the, the corner here and we're going to be in May before you know it. Uh, Chris, good to see you again. Always good to see you, Tom. Always good. Hope you had a great week last week. I did. I took a week off. Uh, ah. I had to take a little breather. I actually had too many things going on and I just couldn't do it. And But but anyway, glad to be back uh, We're t- today. So we're going to talk about uh, what's going on in the news this week is pushing the markets or shall we say not pushing the markets. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the markets themselves. And then I want to talk a little bit about moving averages and 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 how I use moving averages. So what we'll do is, you know, you and I will banter back and forth here about how we use moving averages as part of our trading strategy. How's that sound? That sounds awesome. Especially the moving averages love to play the trends here. Nice. Some people so, like the ponies, I like the trends. <laughs> yeah. And and that's one great way to play them and you know, so when you take a look at uh, uh what's really kind of impacted the news this week, I mean, you know, infrastructure still kind of on again, off again in terms of exactly how that's going to shape up. Um, I noticed that um, SpaceX and SpaceX slash Tesla kind of in the news, um, you know, Tesla's uh, uh, there, there's now reports saying that Tesla cars can drive with nobody in the driver's seat. Um, I haven't figured out. I, I have a Tesla. I have not figured out how to do that yet. I'm not even sure I want to figure that out. I didn't know you could do that. I was going to ask, are you trying? Are you even trying? No. Okay. No. In fact, um, you know, I paid for that uh, that service, that full autonomous driving service, and it doesn't work. It's not turned on yet in the state of Florida. So, uh, you know, people are getting or doing things that I just didn't think could be done. Uh, maybe they're part of a beta test that I'm not anyway. Um so we, we see that, um, you know, and, and, and I look al- along, uh, I saw Nikola this week uh, kind of got a pop up because Neo now too. they're, you know, hydrogen fuel stations uh, are, are kind of in the news. Um, uh, you know, you look around uh, real estate, you know, the, the, the kind of the off again, on again on terms of home sales. But, uh, you know, the home sales kind of fell for March, they said. And. I, I, I agree with that, but only because inventory is so low, it's destined to push home price sales lower. When you don't have inventory to sell, you're not going to sell as many homes. That's right. So that's it. Then, you know, take it. You, so I, I look around and, you know, if I were to take um, the news events for the week, I really have to categorize them into really a couple of things. Number one, stimulus checks. And number two, COVID. So when you look at stimulus checks, you know, you got that new batch. There's another batch of $1,400 stimulus checks going out, going to push the dollar lower, going to push assets higher. And I think that's the reason why we saw, we've been seeing a rebound in equities this week. Uh, you know, you could call it, you know, daily news, you could call it earnings reports, although Netflix really didn't help the, help out in the earnings report category this week. But the markets have rebounded into the end of the week. And I think a lot of that has to do with where else are you going to put your money? You know what? On that stimulus check and how I I see it exactly the same way, there's also a a windfall for some companies out there. Um, And everybody talks about how they think that, especially the younger generation is going to be saving those checks. I don't think so, Tom. Look at Abercrombie & Fitch, look at American Eagle, look at Buckle, look at some of these retailers that are down at the teen level. Man, those teens, I mean, stimmy check is now a buzz phrase among the younger kids. I think those stimmy checks are making it right to the checkout at those companies, and those stocks are flying. Those are. And if anything, what's happened is is that when you got the first round of checks that went out last year, there was saving, there was investing because no one knew when the next round was coming. Now they seem to be coming like paychecks. And and so there's this pent-up demand, and I'm with you on this. Yep. There's this pent up demand to get out there and 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 spend that money because it's burning a hole in the pockets of a lot of people. So I, I'm with you there, buddy. In fact, yeah. um, you know, we'll talk about stocks a little bit later, but uh, definitely 
this whole stimulus is stimulating a lot of stocks. Yeah. Now, let's move the other direction. COVID. So India came out with the highest daily record number of coronavirus earlier this week at 300,000 in a day. Um, you know, part of me looks at that and says, sounds like a lot. But if you look at the number of people that live in India, it's not a lot. I mean, when you when you look at the law of averages, that's just, you know, kind of what I think is that when I look at that number, I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I had to check myself and say, how many people live in India? It's a very small percentage. What's that, what do you know what the number is roundabout? I don't I don't know what the number of uh, India is obviously over a, a billion. Country. Yeah. OK. I mean, we're so, so, you know, you look at that. It's just such a small, small, small number. Uh, you know, when you look at the the population of India and the average daily cases, I'm sure somebody's going to put together a nice little report and explain that. But it won't be on the front of mainstream media because that doesn't sell, right? right. What well, sells that hit- is that number three hundred thousand. That sells. Yeah, that that hit oil earlier this week too. When that headline crossed, and they started saying, "Well, maybe we're going to see India, India slow down." Man, they are a major importer of oil, and that hit the USO kind of toppled down. It was up at the top of one of its Bollinger or its Bollinger bands, but. That took a little bit of the air out of that. Not only that, but some of the commodities trade here this week. And you know, Chris, probably the biggest news story that we heard this week was the Biden administration now wants to increase capital gains uh, with uh, as much as 43, what is it? I got 43.4% yeah. uh, for folks making over a million dollars a year. I mean, <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> this was... Uh, the cold water bucket challenge for the market, right? I, we we knew this was coming, but I don't think anybody saw this one coming. This was a little twist, and people are saying uh, they were softening up, saying it was thirty nine. You know, it's going to be in. They went the extra mile right. here. Um, and then uh, the other big piece that I wanted to mention was VXX because I did a, a, a I talked a little bit two weeks ago on this program about VXX. And so if you look at where VXX was two weeks ago, uh, it was trading, you know, somewhere around 1050. So now we're down below 10. So, uh, you you know, if you listen to me, I was I was using it as a hedge to go long uh, or to, as a hedge against long uh, my, my long portfolio. And so, yes, this dropped. I rolled uh, into some new VXX, which, uh, you know, what I basically did was I was I was short the 1050 puts two weeks ago. Last week I rolled because it would came down to 10 and I rolled into the 10 puts that expired this week. And of course, very close to expiration so, uh, or very close to where, where I am right now. So uh, what I lost last week, I almost picked up this week. Now I'm actually thinking of rolling this again and rolling this out because of that sell in May and go away. Uh, you know, theory that uh, a lot of us seasonal traders like to do. And when I look at the markets, when I look at what go, what's happening going into the next week, we, we're starting to see a lot of that uh, where, you know, the most popular stocks tend to drop the first couple weeks of May. And if that's the case, then the VIX should go higher. And uh, that, that's what I'm looking at doing, Chris. The other thing I want to mention is um, USO for a moment. So I also discussed XLE, and I think you did too. Um, as part of that dirty energy uh, campaign. And XLE, I kind of did the same thing. You know, I sold some puts on XLE and it dropped and I sold some more and we rebounded. So I, uh, what I lost on the first round, I more than made up for on the second round. So, you know, part of the, the whole strategy of, in, of trading and investing is to me, no, you know, I, I, I tread lightly. Uh, when I when I make these these uh, small trades, knowing that if it goes against me, I have a little more, bit more gunpowder in that I can add to my position and therefore lower my cost, lower my break even. I might increase my risk, but I'm also increasing my probabilities uh, of of coming back to break even as well. Right. Yeah. I like I like that VIX rollout too, especially you know when you look at the VIX. What do you think about, I mean, we had a couple closes above 18 this week. 
So volatility is starting to creep its way back into the market. You mentioned sell in May. You know, earnings are going well, right? Yeah. So, I mean, if we stick on the news, earnings are going well. Um, one of the outperformers, a lot of the outperformers I'm seeing are down at the small cap level, HZO, which is uh, Marine Max. I mean, yeah. it's still the get out there trade. You know, they sell boats. They make boats. So there's there's this kind of, you know, feeling like, that risk on trades come off, but it's still on in certain areas of the market. The VIX is kind of telling you by what you're saying and what I'm seeing here that that sell in May, you know, and go away is actually maybe going to hit the market a little harder here. I, I, I do believe that. I mean, there was a lot of uh, folks out there in the Reddit community that was saying that the crash was coming in April. Well, mm -hmm. the only thing that crashed in April was the VIX and yeah. VXX. Uh, but, you know, we're down at some historic lows right now on VXX. So t that's why it tells me throw a little bit of money in there to hedge the long stuff. And, and so I'm looking to extend that long trade in VXX and see where it ends up going. The other thing I want to mention is, and I didn't mention this last week because I wasn't here, but, you know, I like, I'm a fan of things that people are not particularly a fan of. Gold happened to be one of those areas that I was a fan of. And, you know, we dropped down, GLD dropped down to 58, uh, 158 back in March and then again in April. And since then, you know, gold is actually starting to see a little bit of a rebound as we're trading, uh, you know, above 166 for GLD. Um, you know, I've bought on the way down and I started buying a little on the way up. Uh, I'm doing this because, for instance, cryptocurrency, which we'll talk about next, has just gotten so crazy. I mean, last week we saw new all-time highs and then we saw the 15% plunge that happened with Bitcoin. So I'm trying to find some of those out of favor assets uh, because they make sense to me as a longer term investor. You know what? You? Uh, I'm going to bridge your conversation and, and keep a place marker on news for a second after this, but bridge your conversation there. I actually pulled up, I got kind of curious last night. I pulled up the correlation just a quick spreadsheet correlation study of Bitcoin versus gold. Because you and I have talked about, is Bitcoin the new hedge? They just hit their lowest correlation. And that's because Bitcoin went through the roof and then gold was going down. When they start to hit that, you start to see the two move together. Gold yeah. moving up off that bottom, as you just mentioned, is kind of what we saw a few months ago where we got that pop off the bottom there. And Bitcoin trying to find its support around that 55, 52, 5 level right now. I think yeah. you've got one of these magical points where both of them are going to kind of move together here. What do you so, what do you see? So we had we had uh I have Bitcoin uh buy-ins uh just around the 51,000 area. That's a 38% retracement off the all-time highs that occurred a little bit more in a week, let's call it a week and a half ago when we went up to near uh, 65,000. But that's not the story, Chris. The story is Ethereum. If you take a look oh. at ETH, ETH, and I've said this for a long time now, I believe Ethereum is the one to own because it, it just adds so much to the network and it adds so much to the community um, and, and the blockchain community. And here we are, we're sitting on all time highs right now as we're having this discussion. Um, you know, uh, this is this just shows you and tell and, and should let everybody know that all coins do not correlate together. You know, I've heard that conversation from people out there that say, oh, you know, you trade altcoins. So if I just buy Bitcoin, it's like I'm trading altcoins. No, it's not. Mm -hmm. And in fact, it's now not just altcoins, but it's the big ones. I mean, Ethereum's number two in terms of market cap. Uh, and, and I believe long term, Ethereum will meet Bitcoin at the market cap arena. Now, what that's going to mean is it's going to mean that we're going to need to see a, Ethereum move four times as high. Uh, uh, to Bitcoin. And, you know, it's going to need to move 4x with uh, Bitcoin moving 1x. Uh, but I believe that could happen in the years to come. So apparently I may not be the only one because we've seen eth Ethereum jump from uh, earlier this week. It was down near 2000. And, uh, and of course, we've gone up above 2600. So huge, huge leap. I mean, we're talking about uh, you know, a near a 25, 30 percent gain this week alone off those lows. Uh, it, it's incredible. Well, you know what? And and 
does that, I guess this is kind of one of those sentiment questions. You were kind of gleaning on being a little bit contrarian and I'm right where they're with you. When you look at Coinbase, uh, their, their direct offering last week, um, do more people associate that with Bitcoin just because of the popularity of Bitcoin and you, you bring up Coinbase is that one of the reasons behind the sell-off in Bitcoin? And people don't make that same relationship with Ethereum. Because if you look at the grayscale, and you and I always talk about the GBTC, um, but we don't talk about the ETHE, which is that same management company, uh, grayscale, that's their Ethereum. Is that the kind of the, the catalyst behind this disconnect here? Because they were moving closely. I think so. I mean, I think so, but I think people are going to wake up and realize that Coinbase is not just Bitcoin. Uh, Riot yes. blockchain is just Bitcoin. That's all they mine. Yep. All right. So they're a Bitcoin mining uh, operation. And that's why you see Riot blockchain drop as much as it has. But Coinbase is trying, it's trying to find its support somewhere near the $300 range. Um, you know, seems to be their, their area of support. Um, and you know what? Full disclosure, I picked up a little Coinbase. I picked up I, a little Coinbase stock. I can't trade the options, but I wanted to give myself a little bit of, of exposure to the stock because I do believe this one. And 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 I'm down on the stock. I'm not gonna not gonna uh, not gonna go you know uh, dancing about that one right now. I'm probably down a little ten percent maybe on it because I own it in the three it, just below three forty. Um, but I also nibbled, and I'm going to nibble more. I've got a couple other areas that I want to go in and nibble at uh, with, I, with uh, Coinbase. But yeah, I, I believe Coinbase. 300. Yeah, I believe I'm Coinbase. Still not in. Yeah, you, well, yeah. you might, you may be soon, soon enough. 302 is um, the low today, yeah. I do believe Coinbase, <laughs> though. People will wake up and realize that it's not just Bitcoin, that it's an entire exchange that represents dozens of coins. Yep. And not all those coins are moving in the same direction or are moving moving in relationship to Bitcoin. Hey, so. let me let me throw something out there. Let me rewind a little bit. Let's go back to news for a second. You weren't I wanted to talk about you with this last week. So we're in the second hundred days. Second hundred days started on April 17th, I think it yeah. was. April 17th. All of a sudden you've got President Biden saying, hey, we, we want to get across the aisle and get this infrastructure, you know, the American uh, jobs plan done. We might even lower our, you know, the, the tab on it here. And the Republicans come back and say that they're going to start putting together a bill that's going to be a lower price tag on it. But there's clearly some movement here. You got the infrastructure stocks doing a little bit better today or this week because of that. What do you yeah. think about this? And how's that? I mean, because I've the, the term second hundred days has been something I've been oh, it's almost a mantra for me over the last month. Second hundred days, second hundred days. And you look at yeah. cannabis and all of a sudden we're seeing bills that are going to deal with obviously the banking industry and cannabis at the state level. Um, but what do you think about this second hundred days? What's it mean for the longer term investors out there that are looking for a let's call it a play? You know, I, I here's my thoughts. I think a lot of that is already jumpy as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, you see a lot of this stuff, it's already jumping ahead of that news and it might happen. It might not happen. What I think is if I were to th play the probability game, I think the probability of inflation rearing its ugly head is a high probability. And therefore, you know, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be, you know, we're not going to see hyperinflation tomorrow, but, uh, but I do think we might start to see this uptick in interest rates kind of resume. And so forget about infrastructure. This is what I'm, I'm forgetting about that right now myself. Um, marijuana stocks, too. I've already seen them start to pop again like crazy. That could be just a short term pop, uh, you know, again, buy the rumor, sell the news. Uh, but I do believe that banks and brokerages still have a lot to, to, uh, a lot to go, a lot more to go in terms of uh, where they are right now. Uh, Goldman Sachs actually is uh, one of the uh, stocks that I'm looking this on my radar because of that and something else that I want to talk about, which is moving averages. Yeah. And so I think it's one a good more, segue, Chris. So let's one, talk about moving averages and I'm going to, I'm going to throw it to you first. So Chris, what, how do you use moving averages in your trading philosophy? 
Well, when you talk moving averages, you're talking trends. Um, and the first word that always comes to people's mind is the trend of your friend or phrase when you say the word trend. Um, trend of your friend, trend being your friend is the 50 day moving average. That is, to me, that personifies a, the friend, if you will, or the foe for traders here. I use that 20 and a 50 day and use them well. And I, you, I know you use a 1030 and I love the 1030 as well too. Um, for the slower or for that move where I think I'm, something's going to play out for two or three or maybe even four months, Tom, I find that watching those silver crosses where the 20 days grabbing momentum, that is one of my, we talked about island indicators a couple of mm -hmm. uh, podcasts ago. Man, that is right there at the base of those island indicators. So it's two trend lines. If you mix in the 200 day for longer term support, which a lot of those clean energy companies are bouncing off of right now, that that trio right there for me is how I trade the momentum and I trade the trends. So you you, you use moving averages uh, as a, a line of support a lot of times. Absolutely. Um, so the, the, the moving average, and for those of you that don't know what a moving average is, it's an average of X number of days back, call it 50 days, 200 days back, and we plot that on a line. And then... Uh, what we can do is we can watch this, uh, the, the actual stock in question. And if it pulls back to a certain moving average, that can, that's considered key support. And that's what uh, Chris is talking about. We also talked about moving average crossovers. Now, what I do is I run a variety of moving average crossovers in my system, uh, in my systems. And um, I don't use moving average crossovers just strictly on their own. I use them in conjunction with other data. So I thought what I'd do is share with you a couple of stocks that are on my radar this week. Um, part of that is moving average crossovers, and part of that is because they've been so strong lately. So if you go back, Chris, if you go back and you take a year's worth of data uh, on the S&P 500, uh, the 500 stocks of the S&P 500, you'll notice that a lot of them are up near the high, their highs for the year, and some of them are actually down near their lows. Now, um, I'm a, I love being a contrarian, except when it comes to stocks that are on their lows uh, that, uh, you know, maybe just are out of favor. I like to wait and see uh, maybe what kind of a turnaround they have, um, et cetera. But I love the buying strength philosophy. So what I do is I time that buying strength with pullbacks. And so you just mentioned a pullback to a moving average. I use two separate moving averages. And when they cross... For instance, a 1030, for a 10 to cross above a 30, that meant the 10 was trading below the 30. That meant that that stock in question may have had a slight pullback. So I find it interesting that when I see all the 1030 pullbacks or, or crosses that are giving bullish signs in the S&P 500 this week, I took those and I ranked them by which ones were on the strongest stocks. Three of those came up. They were in the financial sector. Goldman Sachs, uh, SV, SVB Financial, the symbol is SIVB. That was my number two rank. Goldman Sachs was number three, symbol GS. And CME Group was number five. That's CME. Now, they're, they're, they're not a financial, but they're an exchange. So I grouped them in the same way. But it's amazing because all three of these are in the top 90 percentile of their low high range over the last year. That means they're all in the top. They're up near 10% of their high, if not higher, between 5 and 10%. So those are the three stocks I wanted to throw out there today uh, as we, we get to the end of our podcast. Um, you have anything on your radar that has something to do with moving averages and what we discussed this week? Yeah, you know what? In the same category, and I'll even go down to the 1030, because I watch the 1030 as well. Take a look at Fifth Third Bank down in the regionals. Fifth yep. Third Bank just knocked their earnings report. Nobody talked about it because it's a small... I can see the headquarters from my office here. Yeah, It's a smaller bank, but they're crossing on their 1030 right now. They're picking up momentum to the upside. Inflation and interest rates go higher. Fifth Third and the banks help out. I like this as a regional stock, and it matches both of our criteria. The 20 and the 50 and the 10 and the 30 are starting to make some bullish moves here. Yeah, I yeah. dig that a lot. I like that a lot. Awesome. All right. Well, Chris, thank you very much for uh, joining me, and it's great to be back. Uh, <laughs> kind of, You missed me last week, didn't you? 
I did. Absolutely. I was a little kinda, hoarse after talking by myself for a half an hour. It kind of sucks talking to yourself, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to bring one of the dogs in and act like I'm talking to him so I have somebody to talk to. Don't go away for a while, Tom. That's what I'm saying. Nice. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> well enjoy the, uh, the week. Uh, glad to see you. And uh, we'll see you again next week on our final week of April. We're going into April has five weeks to the month. So we'll be talking about the final week of April and uh, we'll talk about what selling May and go away actually means and much, much more. Uh, Guys, uh, from myself and Chris, have a great weekend and we'll see you again same time next week. Hey, thanks again for watching the video. Three things for you. Number one, for more information on how we trade like rules-based traders, check out the description below this video. I've got a lot of free stuff there for you. Number two, like this video, please. It helps support the channel. And finally, if you subscribe to the video and ding the button next to it, you'll get the next one as soon as it's uploaded. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next video.